In this short video clip, we are going to cover the topic of modern Keynesians and their view on unemployment and inflation. So, for the Keynesians, um, prices are sticky, so therefore inflation, price level, is sticky. Also, uh, they believe that uh, we can have situations of low and high unemployment which are related to a shallow Phillips curve or long run Phillips curve. So there are different um, uh, uh, like views in terms of the Phillips curve. We cover the monetarist view and the uh, new classicals view. The idea of today is to search what is the view of modern Keynesians in terms of the current affairs of the economy. We will refer back to the 70s when uh, we have uh, policies um, that um, follow uh, uh, the new classicals and also we will look at times in which um, Keynesian economics um, uh, took place. One of the examples particularly on policies about the, the Keynesian school is the current uh, pandemics. Uh, in March 2020, uh, both the uh, Federal Reserve and the government of the United States acted. The same happened in the UK. So uh, let's go to uh, my PowerPoint and let's see what are the implications of the modern Keynesian view and let's uh, um, just learn what they need to say um, about the current crisis and how can we uh, possibly take advantage in terms of uh, economic decisions. So uh, we start here and um, actually in this slide, so as you remember, this is the Phillips curve. Uh, so before the 60s, where there were a inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation, meaning that if aggregate uh, demand decreases, so therefore unemployment increases, and also as aggregate demand decreases, uh, um, inflation decreases. So there is a direct relationship between aggregate demand and price level. If demand increases, inflation increases. If the aggregate demand decreases, the same happens with inflation. There is an inverse relationship with, with these two variables and unemployment. So therefore, if the aggregate demand increases, unemployment decreases, and the opposite. The same happens to inflation. So the Phillips curve is the relationship between uh, the actual inflation and unemployment, the inverse relationship between these two variables. So back in the 70s, um, uh, Milton Friedman added expectations or inflation expectations to the uh, formal equations of, Bill, uh, of uh, Bill Phillips. So the equation then uh, said that inflation equals uh, inflation expectations and also plus an inverse relationship of inflation with, uh, within, with um, unemployment, so one divided unemployment. Apart from that, uh, some theorists also aggregated the uh, constant K or another uh, variable K for other additional macroeconomic shocks such as uh, um, in increments in commodity prices or a supply chain disruption such as the one we have now. So the things uh, that we are going to cover today are like uh, uh, just the controversy between the neoclassicals and uh, the um, modern Keynesians about particularly that equation. Um, in general, um, I will say that the modern Keynesians therefore uh, develop uh, the uh, Keynesian theory, yes, by a um, in, like including uh, assumptions from the new classicals. Particularly, they included the role of expectations within their um, uh, theories and also the effects of, of supply um, coming from demand. 
So that uh, give to the modern Keynesian theory uh, like a position in between Keynesians and neoclassicals. In general, they are going to say that the changes in equilibrium unemployment are due to changes in structural unemployment. Un structural uh, structural um, unemployment is the fact that economies move from certain sectors of the economy to another sectors of the economy. Particularly when economies are advanced, they tend to shift from manufacturing-based sectors to service and capital-based sectors. That is particularly the case of the United States and the United Kingdom and many other um, countries in the European Union. Japan, uh, possibly, and uh, G7 countries in general. So, as equilibrium only changed by structural unemployment, so, it, it therefore, uh, um, the level of unemployment is actually the natural level of unemployment. The second problem in terms of uh, changes in equilibrium unemployment is given by the problem of hysteresis. So, for instance, uh, hysteresis is a ripple effects or continuing effects uh, uh, coming from a previous uh, a problem in, in employment. Uh, these continuous effects come uh, as a result of the uh, continuous effect that have unemployment of people. So, um, very difficult, for instance, during the pandemic, we have seen how um, we have had like um, the available, or just the available uh, people to work have increased, however, unemployment has decreased. This shows that uh, possibly the reason why we have this, this uh, current situation is that uh, people need more training. So therefore, as you can see, there is a continuous and permanent shock from hysteresis in terms of unemployment. So, meanwhile, we do not solve the problems, we'll say the modern uh, Keynesian in terms of training, we will carry on having this problem of uh, unemployment, yes, uh, that is uh, hidden behind uh, the, the, the shock that we try to avoid using quantitative easing. So, another uh, thing that uh, changes equilibrium unemployment is the uh, permanent shock on unemployment. The third thing is the persistence of demand deficient unemployment. When we have a shock in aggregate demand, such as the shock that we have in March 2020, uh, when uh, the pandemic officially started, so uh, demand decreased and decreased uh, below the potential of the economy, the full potential of the economy. So therefore, there we have a demand deficient unemployment because demand is low, well below the level at which the economy can produce. Um, I think for good, uh, uh, the monetary policy and the uh, government policy was to support the economy. That is Keynesian. The, the Keynesian position will be intervention. So, the policies that uh, the governments have taken are actually policies for the political left, Keynesian policies. So, I think that is one of uh, the critics that many uh, politicians make to the same uh, of their own Tory party, for instance. And this persistence of uh, demand deficient unemployment uh, generates a problem called efficiency wages payment of efficiency wages is the duality this problem is the duality of outcomes when you have a demand deficient unemployment the first uh, uh, sticky solution for uh, the modern Keynesian position or the assumption is that we have this payment of efficiency wages and you can see them uh, when um, uh, uh, companies, instead of decreasing the real wages, they tend to increase uh, wages above the real wage. Um, the, the real wage. Real wage is wage minus uh, inflation, or sometimes wage minus inflation expectations. 
So um, the problem of efficiency wages is that uh, businesses will prefer even to carry on uh, increasing uh, wages uh, uh, above the uh, or real wages will increase. This will ensure that um, employees are going to carry on working and delivering the same effort. So re remember our uh, labor discipline model. Effort is important, very important. Um, effort per, per wage is very important for uh, businesses. So they wouldn't like to see uh, effort uh, decreasing when they have low or demand efficient employment. Another issue that supports the, the, the demand efficient unemployment is the um, a notion of insider power. The fact that uh, some countries, not all, I, I, wouldn't, I won't say that the UK have insider power in terms of unions in this country are not very strong. However, they are in the United States, or oh, at least they are more, uh, uh, they are stronger. So it matters more, like well, they have more rights in terms of uh, uh, getting redundant or uh, asking to, to, to leave the company for certain reasons. So as you can see, um, the reasons for the persistence of demand efficient unemployment is the fact that we have these efficiency wages and inside the power. And these make prices, or prices uh, like denoted by wages, in the in the um, in the labor market, uh, very sticky. So as I said before, the modern Keynesian position was to include the uh, expectations. All the theory on expectations have been uh, addressed even uh, until today. So I think that is one of the main contributions of the new classic. Modern Keynesians uh, then incorporated expectations and also said that supply, uh, there are supply side effects arising from changes in aggregate demand, something that uh, the new classicals uh, did not address. So this means that when aggregate demand actually increases, so therefore uh, businesses are going as well to increase uh, the supply side. And uh, this is going to turn uh, like um, or change uh, unemployment or decrease unemployment. The second thing, because of in incorporation of expectations, people is also ready to the expansion of aggregate demand. Particularly, this will have a high effect on businesses because if they see a permanent uh, increment in aggregate demand, uh, uh, businesses are going to be willing uh, to carry on investing more and more and more. This is very important for the current crisis. Particularly um, uh, today, um, countries are trying in general just to uh, stop quantitative easing, e.g. E the United States um, and uh, the UK. The European Union is still in, in uh, they, they, they need plans to decrease uh, quantitative easing and probably they will, so, uh, will carry on with uh, that strategy later this year as inflation is uh, spiking there. So the problem with this is that uh, aggregate demand is not going to be seen, or uh, agents in the economy are not going to expect that aggregate, aggregate demand is going to carry on expanding. And that poses a problem, the problem that investment is going to be low. If investment is low, probably we will see effects in the short run in terms of unemployment. As investment decreases, unemployment decreases as well. So this also, this expansion of progressive expansion of aggregate demand that was uh, um, uh, like supported by the modern Keynesian position also have effects on the long-term employment. If governments have this expansion or permanent expansion or advocate for this expansion in aggregate demand, they will see the long-run unemployment to decrease. So therefore, for the modern Keynesian, provided the expansion of aggregate demand, 
the Phillips cord is not going to look vertical. It will it will look uh, like um, um, uh, this. It will tend it will uh, be uh, more uh, shallow. So therefore, um, the long run um, uh, 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 Phillips cord is going to uh, actually. Uh, be in a point in which unemployment will decrease in the long run if and only if there is a policy in which uh, there is an expansion of aggregate demand. So let's see how are the effects on this slide. Uh, here we have the inflation in the y-axis and unemployment in the x-axis. This is the Keynesian analysis of expansionary policies. So we start here in the point A. In point A, we have a level of inflation pi 1 and a level of unemployment EU1. We usually use these letters to denote unemployment and also inflation. At this level A, there is an, an, an expected augmented Phillips curve. So these expectations augmented Phillips curve as you can see, have these equilibrium levels in the market, short run equilibrium level in the market. So therefore, assume that aggregate demand expands. So therefore, the economy moves from point A to the left to point B. As you can see from this relationship between unemployment and inflation, which is the blue line, Inflation will increase from pi 1 to pi 2. Yes, as, and as inflation increases from uh, pi 1 to pi 2 here to the left, yes, uh, at the level of B, so therefore expectations adjust up. So therefore, uh, the next year, uh, the expectations for the next year is that the Phillips curve as a whole will move upwards. Well, in other words, people will expect um, inflation or higher inflation. Remember that this Phillips curve moves every time that expectations increases. So if aggregate demand increases, people will expect or households will expect or agents in general are going to expect this uh, inflation to come. As a result of this, we will have permanent increments in, uh, 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 in inflation. These expectations will carry on increasing up until uh, uh, we have uh, the, the position in which we have higher and higher inflation. However, following the modern Keynesians, uh, the same, uh, well, is the, the, the effect of unemployment is not going to be as uh, the new classicals predicted. The fact that this um, level of um, inflation are going to, or this, at this level of inflation, unemployment is going to tend to a natural level of unemployment. Opposite, for the Keynesians, as inflation progressively increases, so therefore, businesses um, uh, attempt to carry on increasing the le their levels of investment. So this situation carries on. So we have growth in the economy and unemployment carries being carry on being low. So therefore, for the modern Keynesians, we have a position in which we do not shift to the right to a natural level of unemployment, but rather we have a, a decrease, a permanent decrease in the long run in the unemployment. So therefore, if we join these points, we will have therefore that this green line is the long run Phillips curve. And as you can see, the difference for uh, the Keynesian analysis is that in, in, in environments in which aggregate demand is increasing actually at certain pace, which in general it does, yes, so we have a, like a, a Phillips curve that is not vertical, it's not um, um, uh, that inelastic. The other situation comes when we have a contraction of aggregate demand. 
the same um, uh, graph applies for a contraction of um, uh, demand. So th this is a Keynesian analysis of deflationary policies. We have inflation and unemployment, and we are going to, uh, again to see the relationship um, denoted by the Phillips curve. We start here at point A. So at this level A, we have certain level of unemployment and certain level of um, uh, inflation. Remember that the Keynesians advocate for a situation in which inflation is um, uh, downward sticky, meaning that it's very difficult for uh, prices to go down. So for instance, for um, uh, uh, people that is employed to accept lower wages from or real wages from their uh, um, uh, employers. In general, that might happen, yes, but as you can see, uh, uh, it might happen at, 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 a, at a very small extent. So therefore, the uh, Phillips score is kinked here uh, at the bottom, yes, and because of price stickiness, so therefore, if there are deflationary policies, inflation will keep or will tend to keep at the same level. So if there are deflationary policies, uh, apart from uh, uh, choking the economy and decreasing aggregate demand, we will have even higher unemployment level. So we will pass from U1 to U2. In the long run, we will have a through hysteresis um, a relatively a shallow Phillips curve as well as we uh, saw as well during um, uh, uh, a reflationary, if you want, a policy. So at the right of the curve, in the long run, we will shift to see when in the long run, inflation will carry on uh, decreasing at a slow pace. What are the take, like, like, takeaway points from these graphs, therefore? We are in a situation of high inflation and Currently, central bankers and, uh, and sometimes, yes, governments are increasing taxes and uh, central bankers want to increase inflation. So uh, if the modern Keynesian analysis is right, this is inflation is going to take a while to disappear. And also, uh, we need to be prepared, actually, after the interest rates start to kick in in the economy to have higher levels of unemployment. Inflation will decrease indeed in the long run, but it will decrease at a very uh, low rate because of price stickiness. So um, we saw that in the 70s, uh, we have as well like uh, deflationary policies and um, I think interest rates went uh, very, very high in uh, the United States and uh, the UK. That uh, choked the economy, indeed, and uh, also governments uh, acted with austerity measures. So the first reaction is uh, that uh, businesses are going to be hurt and uh, therefore unemployment is going to increase, as we can see in this diagram. So, what can we do then in the current situation? Um, first of all, I uh, uh, would like to say that the Keynesians uh, rejected the approach of, to the recession of 2009 uh, uh, and, and 20, and also debated the uh, austerity measures of 2010. And I agree with something uh, uh, very strongly uh, with the modern Keynesian position. I believe this is not the time to uh, um, increase taxes uh, from uh, the side of the government, no other time to uh, uh, thinking of increasing interest rates. That can hurt the economy uh, uh, very badly when we have actually an inflation that is being fueled by, uh, that is being increased, increasing by um, uh, in increments in um, uh, or, or problems in the supply chain that are just uh, passing through to other uh, uh, markets, such as the wage market and commodity uh, um, uh, markets. 
But in general, uh, I think the uh, most important thing is to solve the problem of supply chain. And that problem cannot be solved by increasing interest rates. Actually, that problem needs to be solved by investing, or at least if the, the, the central bank is going to try to sort out the situation, instead of buying mortgage-based securities, the central bank should buy bonds from uh, corporations that are linked to the supply chain. This will make uh, businesses more easy to the supply chain and investment in the supply chain might improve. So um, that would be the first measure that, that governments and also the central bank uh, need to take at the moment, rather than increasing taxes and uh, um, increasing interest rates. The big problem that uh, we are facing for the uh, near future is the uh, four or three chokes in taxes, inflation, interest rates, and also a, a choke, a possible choke in aggregate demand. So even though when I am not saying that this, uh, we are going to have high unemployment uh, this year, the case for unemployment is building up. So. Uh, instead of being uh, like a, a tail risk, I think uh, the risk of a, a recession is increasing very rapidly for the United States and the G7 economies, uh, uh, economies as a whole. Probably not as much as, as Japan and other countries with lower rates of inflation. So inflation uh, has not been as high, for instance, in France, uh, but yes, it has been uh, high in Germany, has been high in the United States and the UK. So there are concerns of the supply side effects of downturn in uh, and subsequent period of weak growth. And uh, that is another uh, a prediction that the modern Keynesian is um, uh, advocating or supporting. So we will see whether uh, the modern Keynesian um, a position is going to play during the current circumstances. Um, as a homework, uh, please uh, review uh, this section of inflation, unemployment, and output, the credibility and central banks. The credibility of central banks is very important for two reasons. Um, Inflation uh, has been uh, delegated to a, a central authority and we try to make this authority independent in order to remove the political bias or remove the inflation bias. That is very important. I want you to think at what extent, for instance, the central banker is independent from uh, the United States government, government when it is the, go the central government, the president of the United States, the one uh, that proposed the name of uh, the central banker and uh, chooses who is going to be the central bank. So in general, we, have, we are in a situation in which uh, usually uh, governments try to increase uh, the rate of uh, inflation or decrease unemployment because gains in political uh, 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 circumstances, political campaigns. So you can see here this indifference called AI1. So at this level, uh, the uh, indifference curve is giving higher, higher levels of satisfaction for the government. However, when we have high inflation, as you can see in this diagram, we are at point uh, D. The difference with point D is that uh, governments will be reluctant to uh, um, decrease unemployment because you cannot see higher indifference curves to uh, uh, here in this diagram. Meaning that if they reduce uh, unemployment, inflation is going to be seen as worst. And that is actually what is going on in uh, the United States. Biden is very scared about uh, the public opinion on inflation. That is kicking in at 7.2%, almost 5% above the target, which is 2%.
The same is happening in the UK. The current inflation, I believe, is 5.4% in the UK, and the target is 2. So as you can see, there, there, there is no uh, situation in which uh, 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 point D can be uh, outperformed by decreasing un unemployment. So if a uh, pi 2, if inflation pi 2 here on this diagram is above the efficient rate of inflation, this represents an inflation bias. So if we follow a, this, a, a, a different um, uh, or a, 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 so a reduction in, in, in unemployment, you can see that we arrive to this point E. At this point E, we will have an indifferent, a higher order indifference curve, meaning that there is a reduction in, uh, there will be a, a possible reduction in the insatisfaction of the government. This time uh, uh, supported by uh, the negative connotation that uh, a decreasing unemployment will have when we have high inflation. So the takeaway from this slide is to see how uh, when uh, at some point when inflation is very low, inflation and low in unemployment is uh, seen by the public in a positive way, and when inflation is already high, uh, is the opposite. So inflation has a, a higher weight than unemployment when inflation is very high. Okay, um, so I think that is uh, uh, the summary that I wanted uh, to cover with you. Um, and I hope to see you then during my next uh, lectures.